So, okay. It's true. I have a confession to make. I've gone full intersectional. But in light of my conversion, I have a suggestion. Namely, intersectionality doesn't go far enough. If we look at this diagram, we can see where intersectionality is now. But here's where it should be. Yes, that's correct. The label says the dead. No marginalized group is as powerless and therefore oppressed as the dead. There's no group as microaggressed. Ever heard the statements, at least you're still alive. You still have your health. They're not truly gone if you remember them. You could have died. Are these not true microaggressions? And what about speaking out about having no voice? Have you ever heard the voices of the dead? You shouldn't be surprised. They truly have none. And over depression? Which other group is treated with either permanent confinement in a box, six feet underground, forever? Or being burned to ash? Which other identity can expect a universal reaction of repulsion and or physical retching and outright vomitous disgust? This isn't occasional or localized. There is no society which has not fully accepted this construction of abuse, designed to deny the basic humanity of the dead. In fact, my research has shown that one out of one persons who identify as dead will face these discriminations by society, all because society has arbitrarily decided that the dead have nothing to contribute. What about dead art, or music, or philosophy, ignored by the living? These societal norms, designed to keep the dead oppressed and the living in power, have to stop. Intersectionality should be focusing on the most oppressed, and work its way to the least oppressed. Aliveism is real. Give the dead their voice back. It's time for the living to check their privilege.